of all that. Boom. Schedule the 500 from there. So there we go. So bottom line, it's back. It's up to the 1,005. 12,950 standard deduction. 87,550. Looks Mui B to the N. Page 2. And 14,884 on the tax now. So 14,14884. Okay. Let's imagine. Imagine. And then we had a tax exempt uh, income over here back to page one on the interest just to make a little bit more complication of things just to complicate things a bit and we'll say that would be in like box eight where we have that tax exempt kind of thing if i go back on over i'm going to say let's say that was from another financial institution i'm just going to say bank two or it's got municipal bonds we'll say and let's say that they were uh, to uh tax exempt interest let's say that was 200 or whatever so then if I pull that on over, I'm going to say 200 tax exempt. So now we've got the tax exempt interest at the 200 and the taxable interest at the 500 and the 200 is not changing any of my calculation because it's, it's reported. I'm showing the IRS. I'm saying, Hey, this is what's on the W2. I'm telling you it's there, but it's not including because it's exempt. I said it was exempt. So we're still at the 87,550. Uh, even though we put that there, 87550, page two is at the 14884, just as it was before. So now let's go back on over and say, let's bring it over the threshold of, uh, of 1,500. So schedule B will populate over here. So let's go back on over and let's make another one. Let's say this is bank three, bank three. And we'll say that we had another 1,000. So, so let's say, let's say 1,200. That should take me over the threshold, well over the threshold. So I'm gonna say forms. So now we still have the 200 exempt, 1,700 like we would expect, but we also see the sub schedule now populating. It's populating a gigantic cosmos. Which is the schedule B. So remember when you think interest income, you think schedule B, but the actual schedule B will only be necessary if your interest income is significant material enough for the IRS to say, we want you to include a separate schedule, listing out the institutions that actually paid you in a more detailed way, that uh, amount is gonna be 1,500. So, uh, so here's that. So we've got the bank and the interest that adds up to the 1,700, which of course pulls in to the first page of the 1040. So now we're at, the 1007 if i go back to my data input over here and was to mirror that uh, i could add another schedule for like bank bank uh two for the exempt portion i just want to make sure it's outside maybe i put that out here somewhere like 200 you know out here 200 or something you know and, and i might have tax exempt uh dividends so i might uh, or, or, or non-qualified, non-qualified dividends and stuff that I might want to break out. So maybe I say this is exempt just for data, just so I can see the exempt portion. And then I can say bank three, three was for, uh, what, what, what did I say? 1,200. And so the total exempt is over here. I'll sum it up, sum it up little darling sorry about that so in any case that adds up to the 1007 pulling over so now we're at the 1017 minus the 12,050 88,950 88,950 is what is down 88,750 I'm at 88,950 K the heck paso 1000 and then 101 1017, 1017, 1017, 12,950, 12,950, 88,750. Yeah, that's right, 88,750. Yeah. What are you talking about? And then the tax calculated on page two, that's 15,148. 15, that's not a 15. Yeah, 15,148. 15,148. Boom. So there is that. So that's the general idea. Usually the interest is fairly straightforward, but you can have those kind of weird situations sometimes with the bond and the amortization of the bond premium and that kind of stuff. 
So just remember the general rule on, on if you got a 1099 and you're saying, okay, the 1099 says I have this taxable component, but part of that is is like something that I, I shouldn't have to include because it's a bond premium or a nominees or something like that. Then what you want to do is say, I got to report this on my taxes as it shows on the 1099 or the IRS is going to almost certainly give me flack about it. You know, try to try to give me a notice on it or something. So I've got to show them why I changed it. So this one, I'm going to say bank four or whatever. We're going to say, let's say that we've, we've got, we've got, we've, we got a thousand from this bank but I'm not taxed on part of it because I'm going to, I'm going to distribute it or I'm not taxed on all of it, let's say. So then underneath it, I might add something which would say, give me some rationale, which might say, well, this is a nominee distribution. And then I could show the negative 1000 here that would say, okay, so the IRS can at least see, okay, now I see that it was on there and then you took it off with this some kind of rationale so you would think that at least just like the computer in uh the iris side of things isn't just going to say oh well you didn't put something on there that matches the 1099 because the computer will at least see it matched up and then you had some other thing the rationale which was which is showing why that that 1099 was in essence wrong or or why you adjusted the 1099 